my name is Bob Harris, I'm the FMB Master Builder of the Year for Energy Efficiency and I lecture in Ecological Building at Kingston University and I gave my job up as a Head of Department in the London College to actually build these uh, ecological buildings here. Right, this is the Earth Dome project in South London and it's the first flats in London to be heated from the ground. So we've got four ground source heat pump systems and what people don't realise is that we've got an air source heat pump system in, in here. And in fact, that was the first air source heat pump um, delivered from uh, Ice Energy. The development is uh, not only ecologically sound, but it's also uh, healthy and it's designed for people so they have minimum allergies in this particular building. It's well insulated, it's uh, designed to uh, bring vitality uh, rather than lethargy, lethargy to your house. I chose ground source heat pumps because uh, I've been lecturing in it for many years and in fact the first ground, well the first heat pumps in the UK were used on the uh, Festival Hall in South London, which people don't realise. They didn't actually use the ground, they used the river. So I was well aware of that, and I could never understand why in the preceding 50 years between that being built and kind of now, that people weren't using them. So I was well, I, I understood the technology. The technology uh, had advanced a lot on the continent, and I was very keen to actually use that in a, in a, in a building that I was going to create in London. So everything kind of really fitted together. The synergy between my understanding of the technology and realising it was true, and the fact that I, I wanted to build a building, and I wanted the, the building to incorporate the technology. So in many respects, the building was built around the technology itself. So for example, it's a thermal mass building. It's a building where we don't have uh, carpets, for example, it's, it's a radiant heating systems. And, the, and it's um, also designed al alongside healthy elements. So when you're in this building, in this radiant heat, then that's very much like you would find outside, like in the, in the sun, that's radiant heat. So it kind of replicates what you find outside, inside. So all of these things, this synergy comes together. So coming out of the ground with the ground source heat pumps, and then coming into this building which has been designed for that, we've got what I would call, a, for me, a fully functioning building that meets the criteria of energy efficiency, health, and brings uh, what we might loosely call vitality to the people in there rather than leth lethargy. And the lethargy element often comes from the sorts of central heating systems that we have in our buildings now. We've had these heat pumps in this building here for around about seven years now. That's uh, probably seven years since we put the ground loop down and in that preceding period, over, over two, two and a half years, we've obviously put the heat pumps in. So certainly we've been running them for fairly consistently for like four, four and a half years. So we've moved from that position of not knowing what we were going to get to a position where we know what we've got, got here and we're very happy with it. As a developer, I was uh, very keen to have a system in this building that didn't need much maintenance. Now the technology that we've got here is basically fridge technology. I mean, it's, it's not complex. And when did your fridge break down? You generally get rid of your fridge because of the way it looks rather than the actual equipment inside it. And I, 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 I understand, and in fact I, I believe and I know that IBT equipment, for example, or ice energy equipment, has been in operation for over 25 years. So what we've got here is a technology that's gonna last a long time. Now the thing you need to ask yourself is you're gonna put gas systems in, how long does your condensing gas boiler last? My experience is that they're not gonna last 25 years. So you're gonna to have to replace them. So although you might have to pay more for the, the ground source system initially, you've got a, a, a much longer payback, sorry, Although you, may, although you may pay more for the system initially, because you haven't got these other issues, then it, it's kind of cheaper in the long run. Now there was another element of this which was important to me, and that was I didn't have to put gas onto this site. This is an all-electric site, but it's not, an all, all, it's not a site where we're using lots of one-to-one -one electricity, which isn't, we wouldn't consider that ecologically sound. It's a site where we're using the ground source heat pumps. They've, they've certainly got one to four efficiency. That means for every unit of electricity you're using, you're getting four units of heat out. That means it's a quarter of the cost. 
But the other thing that's really important about it is that we didn't have to pay for the gas supply. So we took that out of the equation, that made it cheaper. And there's something else that people don't realize, and that is that because it's an electric system, we don't have to pay anything for gas certificates each year, which is brilliant. And there are other litigation issues about that you could have with uh, gas systems, for example, you know, with carbon monoxide uh, poisoning, for example, that doesn't exist here. And so all in all, that made total sense to me for um, a system which was cheap, efficient, efficient and ecologically sound and also matched all my ideas about health and, uh, and vitality in a building. On this site we've got uh, seven boreholes. The deepest of the boreholes goes down 40 metres and it, it only took two and a half hours to actually put that borehole into place. The loop lengths or the, the, uh, that go into the ground are around about 90 metres in length in all for each of the three uh, ground source systems I've got. That means that the system is very efficient and works extremely well. We're getting an efficiency of around about what, probably above one to four. And that, what that means in real terms that for every unit of electricity you use, you get four units of heat out. So really that's the equivalent of um, What's that, one to four, 20, uh, um, yeah, it's a quarter of the price. Now the other thing that's very interesting about that is that when you look at the actual systems I've got, they're actually running on a, what we would call one kilowatt. It's, it's almost the equivalent of what you would have on your, um, on your kettle, for example. So my, all of my hot water and underfloor heating in this building here runs on in, in that kind of efficiency. And what, the reason that's good for the, cl the uh, clients, either the people who buy this property or the people who might rent it, is that their, their costs are very low. They don't have to pay high amounts of money for their heating and hot water systems. Okay, so there's a question that we could ask about extra capital costs for this equipment. Um, that was an issue for me, but the way I kind of reduced the cost was number one, I actually uh, didn't have to put uh, gas supply onto the site, which saved several thousand uh, pounds and I could offset that against the cost of the equipment. The other thing is that the technology itself is fridge technology and I asked myself and, and discussed it with my wife at that particular time, when did our fridge break down? And in fact fridges don't break down, the technology lasts a long time. So I've got every belief that this equipment is going to be here 20, in 25 years. It's likely to last, outlast my life expectancy, which seems a bit bizarre. But when you match that against um, some of the other equipment, like gas uh, condensing boilers, for example, I mean, they do break down. I have them breaking down, not consistently, but they're not going to last me 25 years. So you've got to, you, you, you've got to look at that that component because that fits in with bringing the capital costs down. I chose Osa Ice Energy because uh, I'd looked at the uh, av equipment available on the market and decided that this was the kind of Rolls-Royce one, that, you know, the best that, as I was viewing it from my technical viewpoint. I wanted four of them so I didn't want actually any problems associated with it. They're going to be, be lasting with me for a long time. I'm renting my properties out so I went for the I I Ice Energy IVT equipment and very pleased with it. I've had good service from Ice Energy, this goes back seven years, I'm extremely pleased with it, I, I, I feel part of the family to be perfectly honest. Now I haven't had a problem, we actually haven't had to call any, any engineers out in, in seven years, but the, I have asked them from time to time to come along and make sure that the equipment is set to its best settings. Um, that's important for me because I'm very keen for the equipment to work at its best and they've, they've done that for me and it hasn't, it, it hasn't been a problem. Brilliant, I'm very pleased with that. Because of my academic background in ecological building, I've been able to see what's coming ahead of us. I've changed that into becoming a developer and successfully develop buildings. And now I'm actually working with people to help them develop their own buildings. These are local authorities, individuals. And what I'm able to bring to that is a vast experience coming over many years and give them the opportunity to, fa to fast track ecological, sustainable health issues around the types of buildings they're either designing, purchasing or, or building. Now, I'm also working with an architectural practice which is 50 degrees north. Um, they're a young vibrant practice who specialize 
in sustainable, healthy ecological building. That's their main core issue. So between the two of us, that's actually working brilliantly well. And I'm keen to uh, you know, pursue that as much as I can.